Welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. I am here with Donna Emmons Owen. I always thought I was I always. I can't uh, make up my mind. I can't. No. I don't know what to do with it. I've I've been back and forwards. I've switched them around. I've had brackets, no brackets. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, maybe people can recommend what they think I should do with that. <laughs> I hate double barrel surname. Hate I can't. It. Like, is one name not good enough for you? Like, what's wrong with you? I just, I, I, I was married previously and changed my, my name on the first day that I got married. And it just seemed like from that day, things went wrong. <laughs> and, I, and then as soon as I went back to my maiden name, life just got better. So everything just started to go right. So I'm, yeah. I'm really pained to lose it again. And did did you double barrel it and then, we had a, and then we, got, we had a pandemic because of it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's because I've lost the Owen. Maybe I'll just take the brackets away and everything will be all right again. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't, so, know what, I don't know what to do with it. Recommendation as well. I, I know you're a bit of a superwoman, but how would you describe yourself? Because I couldn't, somebody said, what does she do for, what's her background? I don't think I could, uh, I, I could piece it together in a sentence. I'd like <laughs> I don't know, but def definitely not superwoman, whatever the opposite to that is. Um, kind of freaking out half the time um I suppose I, I you know I've, I've had 17 years now in the recruitment industry um so you could say that I'm a recruiter through and through and wherever my career goes that's what will be at the core of me that's what will kind of make me tick um but I, I'm also a mom and um I am also somebody who is uh, very into kind of health and well-being and just um, just kind of being happy really um, so yeah I, I, I like to have it all a happy healthy mom that has a recruiter at the centre of her being yeah it doesn't, doesn't sound like the best blend but somehow I find a, a, a little bit a sweet spot in the middle so you've had a 20 year career is that right? oh god Walter, do I look like I've had a 20 year career yeah, yeah it's, going, it's going on for that now, I feel like I've yeah. been in a twenty-year career this last week. All oh, right. Uh, it's, it, when you say that, it makes me want to um, freak out. But I suppose when I actually think back, yeah, it, it, it is. Um, and it's yeah, it's, it, it's been incredible. But um, yeah, it's, it has been a long time now. And you've been on a bit of a journey. So, like, just to set the scene, I, I don't want to go too much into like every year and what you did. No. But you were we'll an here for a very long time. <laughs> you were an agency for uh, for a long time at different at different levels in different types of organisations. Um, but what I'm interested in is how let let's start at the point when you left agency, then did internal, then left that and went into showcaser. What was that transition like? So that was uh, really pivotal for me and um, not least because that was all going on when i had lots of other stuff going on in my life and um, so it will always remain something that i've got in a, in a box that i can pull out whenever i need some inspiration um, and i need a little bit of strength like maybe at the moment and um, i remember kind of getting through that that change and that transition and um, so as a recruiter i was always trying to find better ways to do things i was always trying to automate as much of the process for my clients and make things easy for them so I've always um I wouldn't say that I've been obsessed with technology or anything like that just more around making everyone's life a bit easier and having um as a as a, as a manager and as a director I was always really focused on productivity so um I had a bit of an eye for that um and then I when I was internal recruiter well, I wasn't really internal recruiter I was a, a had a talent so I was setting up talent models for uh, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary companies um, and again realized that there's a real gap there in terms of um, technologies and I was also very comfortable at that point I was living in Norfolk um, my office was like eight minutes from my home which was like 15 minutes from school and I had this seemingly very comfortable life that I suppose at one point earlier on in my life I would have dreamt of having mm. um but actually I just what, felt like there was something you, missing um I was oh this is only kind of five six years ago so you know 20, 25 23 yeah. um 
And so I, uh, yeah, kind of had this niggle. Um, and uh, so I started to um, have a look in the market to see um, what roles were around in HR technology, recruitment technology. And uh, lo and behold, shocking, there wasn't a lot in Norfolk. No. Um, and quickly realized that it was going to have to be not a career change but a complete life change yeah and um, for me and the family so my um my youngest was was a newborn at the time and um yeah so i i i, I saw the role at um well it was actually at s3 it was in their innovation department so they were building quite gary eldon was at the time was um, quite heavily focused on building their own technologies mm. to both aid S3 to get ahead of the game and then commercializing those. So that was going to be the role to take these products that they built out to the market and test them to see whether there was any legs and whether, whether they'd be able to sell them. Um, and I went and, uh, and interviewed with, with the guys there um, and having no technology experience whatsoever, Andy must have just seen something and he just took a punt on me basically and offered me a job um, and then I tried to do the commute for a year or so Norwich mm. to London every day uh, getting up at about quarter to four in the morning I was on the quarter to five train mm. into London and then getting home at like half seven eight at night and I was like you know um, someone is literally someone else is literally bringing my kids up I never see them something needs to change yeah um, so we all up sticks and moved to Hertfordshire. So, um, yeah, it was it was a really good decision. My life has changed unbelievably since that. I've met some great people. I've got a fantastic network now, both in women in technology, women in recruitment, um, internal recruitment, HR technology. So kind of the Recfest guys, Bobby and Jamie, and all those guys. I've got this these this great support network around me. Um, so whilst it wasn't without its um, interesting times, it was really a good move. And I really feel grateful to Andy for taking the, taking the punt in the first place. What, um, what, what did you learn? So uh, I learned that, uh, well, there was a, a couple of things, really. Firstly, um, if you don't understand something when you first see it, it's not because you are um, you're stupid or there's anything wrong with you. Um, we all have this innate ability to learn. So if you, you know, if you look at kids, the way that they learn at school, obviously we don't have the same level of rate of learning as adults. But if you just apply yourself and if you want something enough, you can go from being the dummy in the office, which is what I spent my first three months at, showcase a feeling like I, you know I was surrounded by all these really clever developers and Michelle Parsons our product manager is like a, a little genius she's amazing and I would attend all the product meetings and really get my fingers in all the pies and at first I just felt like the dunce at showcaser mm -hmm. um, and actually 18 months later there was literally nothing I didn't know about that product um, so I think, you know, just believe in yourself a little bit more. I've, my self-confidence has increased massively um, since, I, since I was there. And, you know, I'm obviously I'm at Vincherry now. And um, I've, I've been through the same journey um, at Vincherry where, you know, day one, this is a really simple, easy to use system. But every bit of technology on the first time you see it looks complicated. Um, and again, go into an office with loads of really um, competent people and thought, actually, you know, oh, I've worked for video products and a few other components within a, a recruitment technology, but this is my first role in CRM. And I, I spent the first couple of weeks thinking, hang on a minute, uh, I've kind of bitten off more than I can chew with this. Am I ever going to get my head around it? And I've been there seven weeks and I think we're going to be all right. Yeah. Uh, you got through the Charlotte Flatley grilling, grilling of yeah. the, of two it. demos, two demos, <laughs> two demos. Um, mm. and, yeah. and she, she's got a scary forensic way of kind of going through things. So I can imagine you're like, yeah. 
another question. Another question. Yeah. Well, the, the good thing is about, <clears throat> about selling um, recruitment technology is, is that whilst you know the the core functionalities of a recruitment agency is basically the same, every demo is completely different. So there's the objectives, the priorities, the core values every agency operates slightly differently which is why there's room in the market for everybody right so we all offer something different so it just keeps it keeps me on my toes and keeps me interesting i can prep my demos and i do you know i think that's my other bit of advice is just you know don't try and wing it because um you will get caught who, out um but who taught you how to sell uh, software sales um i've got a tr credit a lot of it to Andy. Um, Where did he ever learn how to sell software sales? I think we're both just <laughs> able to learn to take all of the, you know, the hustle and the um, the creativity around selling through hard times in recruitment. You know, in a good market, um, rec recruitment is relatively straightforward. Yeah, mm. it's it's the tough times that test whether you're a decent recruiter or not. And I think me and Andy are both old enough to have been through three or four particularly bad dips in the market. So we're able to turn on a sixpence and just, you know, do whatever we need to do to get that deal over the line. Mm. And um, that then is very applicable. So, you know, I know that some companies or some people think that SaaS sales is completely different to recruitment and therefore, you know, never the, the two should meet and recruiters don't make good SaaS salespeople. I think that's bullshit. I mean, I'd say the bullshit um, because, um, yeah, I think you can, If you, it's, a, it's all about that individual and how they can apply all of that experience to the role that they're in now. And absolutely, you know, I could go to software sales school tomorrow and not learn anything like as much about how to sell software as I have um, learn in my recruitment career. It's the recruitment career and all those experiences that I take out every day into my demos to sell the software. So what's that? Yeah. What's the what's the what's the process? Somebody does does lead gen. You book in a you book in a demo and then you go through that and objections and then another demo and then a close. Is that? Yeah, it it tends to be. I mean, we 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 are really spoiled. I, I feel really fortunate at the moment because. Um, everything that I've ever sold has always been on a very outbound basis. So I worked for, I've worked for myself in recruitment. I've worked for Reed. I've worked for Hayes. Um, and I started my career in a couple of smaller agencies, but they're very focused on business development. So, um, I've, I've always been used to getting out there and selling and um, doing outbound sales. Obviously it's showcaser, it's startup. No one knew who we were. Our, out, our inbound leads was zero. No, I don't think we ever had an inbound lead. And if we would have had an inbound lead, Andy wouldn't have let me have it anyway. Um, so everything was, you know, every day getting out there, constantly walking around London with a laptop uh, on, my, on, my, on my back and a showcaser t-shirt, you know. Um, and I've arrived at Vincherry and all of a sudden I'm working for a really established product mm. that, people like we've got a good reputation in the market we treat people well so we get a lot of inbound activity we get a lot of demo requests and um, so whilst i am you know i'm still very much focused on um getting the name out there and doing as much outbound activity as possible we do have a process where um people like you just come in request demos it's up to me then to be able to provide what they need in the demo so doing some really good um finding some intel about that company so that the demo is, is relevant for them and then we'll just take it from there it might be two or three demos depending on the size of business whether they're 10 perm 360 180 um and then doing the bit that i'd really do well which is the closing oh um, yeah so uh one of the things we're going to do in the next time we get you on is we're going to have yourself charlotte and andy yeah. go, through, go through the details of what it means to change an ATS mm. system and all the things that you have to look out for and all the things that you can ask. Um, obviously, I'm not the details person, so I'd be rubbish at it. So hopefully we'll get that done. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. I'd love to appear with Andy again. He's actually, um, he's, he, I'm a, a big fan. One of the other things that's helped me pivot has been coaching. So 
nobody i don't care at what level of your game you are is above learning and having a mentor it's something that i'm a huge advocate of and i've done it since i left recruitment um i, I got put onto a fast track program um in the company that i went to when i left agency and as part of that deal i got an executive coach which at the time i was like nah, i know it all i'm a recruiter i know everything and uh, was just blown away by how much that did for me personally and in my career so it's something that i've kept doing um and i've actually asked andy to to be my coach um for a little while so we're having a coaching session on friday so that will be interesting a different dynamic yeah um yeah, very good. I don't feel like he's uh, he's coaching everybody right now. So, uh, he's yeah, he is. I could just say that before we recorded, I kind of think of him at the minute like a huge sponge full of twenty years of recruitment knowledge and cuts and bruises, and he's using that to let everybody, you know, let these uh, smaller companies have a little bit of a ring out of him. Um, <laughs> and you know, I, I I would say do it because he he does know know a lot and um yeah i mean never no one knows it all but i think he really can help particularly in this market where you know it's not easy and it's going to get harder so if nothing else it's just nice to know you've got somebody in your corner um even if he's not doing anything that's you know kind of practical just knowing that he's there to talk to and advise i think is is huge um i'm super proud of the recruitment um, industry at the moment I think I remember when uh, we had the recession in 2008 2009 and I was a recruiter at the time albeit a teenage one and um, I was I just felt so proud to be in that industry I felt like I had this kind of badge of honor because where others were really struggling the recruitment agency uh, so the recruitment industry really fought fire with fire and they were you know they were pivoting all over the place they were going into going into insolvency you know um doing insolvency practitioners whatever they needed to do mm. to be able to survive and it really helped me and, and um kind of built a thick skin in me and i was super proud and i still feel now that even though i'm not in agency i feel like i'm still part of the industry and i feel quite proud of, of, of the way that everybody's responded to it collaboration is huge right now um, you know the networks are all on fire members only trm pirates where, wherever you choose to go that's entirely up to you but the thing is that they they are there and everyone's collaborating sharing ideas even sharing clients and candidates between agencies it's like what's happened so whilst it's tough times and it's not going to be easy i think there's there's some good to come out of it okay donna that's us we will uh we'll catch up next week when we go through more specific Detail. yeah i look forward oh. to it and uh yeah that's going to be really it's going to be really helpful um we were with Thanks our last having me. yeah we were with our last yet, for four years on and off so um to change is it's, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of things that go into picking who you're going to choose and then the bet the ways to get the best out of a system all of which i have nothing to do and it's all down to charlotte so um i'll let her uh go through that with you but until then well i'm glad you're enjoying using the system anyway yeah, uh, well glad charlotte is and not <laughs> have you even logged in yet <laughs> no comment <laughs> <laughs> all right take care thanks guys see you later